and you can't use your arm anymore. Your arm is still attached to your body. It's still utilizing resources from your body, but it's not giving you any service. It's not doing anything. So if, you're, if there's a piece of you, meaning if there's a part, if there's something that's connected with your identity that you have invested consciousness in, and you go into denial on that, then it's like it goes numb and you can't do anything with it, including take the consciousness back and, and stop identifying with it. When I say stop identifying with something, I don't mean go into denial about it. See, th this is the principle of psychology. Psychology strives to make the unconscious conscious. And although they don't t usually talk directly in terms of identification, and projection, things like that. They, they functionally, when they treat through psychoanalysis and psychotherapy, what they do is they, they try to increase the awareness of the parts of ourselves that we identify with so that we can take that consciousness back, withdraw that identification. Because you can't withdraw the identification if you're in denial. Oh, no, I'm not identified with that. Oh, no, mm -mm, I never think that. Oh, no, 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 I never feel that. No, 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 no. So the fact that we have a subconscious means that we have not only identified with these thoughts and feelings and, and things and people and stuff, but we have also pushed that identification below the surface of our consciousness into denial, through the process of denial, see? But the, oh, no, 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 I, I don't ever think about that. Huh? It's just like some people, when they hear that Bhagavad Gita is spoken on the battlefield, they get all upset. Oh, this is violence, this is war. Huh? You never got violent? You never got angry? You never have to fight when you were a kid? Come on, you're lying. You're in denial. You're in denial about your anger because anger is a thing that everybody feels. Everybody feels anger. It's a part of life. Even Krishna feels anger. And when he does, he turns up as a roaring lion. <laughs> so, try to understand. Everything that is a part of being human is included in ourself, right? And if we deny that part of ourself, we lose that part of ourself, and we cannot get it back until we bring that part of ourself back into awareness, back into consciousness. That's why one of the preliminary exercises or preliminary processes of spiritual life is like depth psychology, becoming really aware, really conscious of, of what it means to be human, you see? If you're on some mental platform that, oh, I never get angry, and I'm never bad, and I never do anything, that's nonsense. That's a complete false construct. Huh? And it's built on denial, and because it's built on denial, a huge portion of the self becomes unavailable. And that part which is pushed into denial cannot be recovered until we become conscious of it and own it and take responsibility for it. Okay? Then we can say, okay, I, now I withdraw my identification with that. You have to distinguish between withdrawing identification and going into denial and making believe that's not there. Oh my God, that's a huge misunderstanding. The question mm -hmm. is that sometimes when I, uh, suppose I'm getting angry or upset about something, and then the, uh, I try and think of, you know, second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, and I think this is actually not relevant to my actual situation, uh, so it shouldn't affect me. So, <laughs> you know, let me not worry about it. Let me that's a it. nice theory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angry. Gosh darn it, I'm angry. Oh, well, actually, that is not relevant to my pre present situation. It says so in this book here. It's actually yeah, it says so right here in the book, <laughs> page 327. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> That's exactly denial. 
That's exact. See, and because you're not taking responsibility for your anger. What does that mean to take responsibility? First of all, it means you accept that it's real. See? First of all, you accept that it's real. This anger is real. And right now, in my conception of myself, I think this is part of myself. Right? Then you bring in Sankhya philosophy. Okay, where am I feeling this anger? In my mind. Why am I feeling this anger? Because something happened to, to X that I'm attached to that I didn't want. Okay, I did not want, I did not want this to happen to this thing that I'm attached to. Okay, so now I'm angry. So now, is this thing that I'm attached to really part of myself? No. At that moment, you distance yourself from it. At that moment, it becomes possible to take back the identification, take back the projection. The projection means, I think, that this is part of myself. My glasses. See how cool looking they are? Boy, they were sure expensive. Man, we had to go to the shop four times to get them right. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So then if my glasses get broken, I get all upset. Gosh darn it, you broke my glasses. You see? So then I have to sit down and I go, look, wait a minute. Are my glasses really part of myself? No. So why am I thinking that they are? This, is, this is thinking is in error. I do not think my glasses are part of myself. That's, this is not denial. Huh? I don't want my glasses to get broken. But they did. So why am I lamenting? Why am I angry? See? I can withdraw that identification. Not that I say, oh no, I'm not angry. See with my hair look? <laughs> That's denial. That's a whole different thing. We have to learn to distinguish between those different things and mechanisms so that we can deal with our identifications and our projections effectively and recover the consciousness that's invested in them. That's the next stage after recognizing that this is a problem or recognizing that it's going on. It's a long process. It's not, it's not an overnight thing, right? I mean, to, to reach the stage where you can contemplate consciousness itself means your consciousness has to be pretty clean, you know, Com comparatively free from projection and identification and other distortions, false ego, basically. Uh, you have to be pretty clear that I'm a spirit soul, I'm, di I'm different from this body, I'm different from this mind. And then take that mirror of consciousness that's normally pointed out through the senses and turn it around and direct it at itself. And the moment you do that, I mean, oh, it's just wonderful. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, this is great. So if you see it happen, if you're able to, to do this, see, just like I, I wrote today on the forum, um, that um, if, these, if these moments of, of lucidity are happening, they are, it means they're happening anyway, right? Everybody can remember a day when they're walking down the street and it's a spring day and everything's just beautiful and like la-di-da, right? They're happy. Why is that? Because somehow or other, accidentally, you manage to contemplate your consciousness. And just the fact that you're aware, just the fact that you're alive seems wonderful. It's blissful. What is that? Or if you're in love. Huh? You're in love and everything is beautiful, everything is groovy. Why? Because you're actually contemplating the nature of your own consciousness. See? But there's some false ego mixed in with that. Nevertheless, 
And even so, it still gives bliss. So imagine if you could purify the consciousness of the false ego and then contemplate. Oh, very nice. Yeah, it's bliss sandwich. Um. <laughs> And you can have it any time you want. See? Just sit down and, and contemplate your consciousness. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. <laughs> Anybody can do this any time. It's absolutely free. Can you understand why the corporate establishment might not want you to know about this? Then you don't need their products, you don't need their media, you don't need education, you don't need anything. Just sit down and contemplate your consciousness. And you're happy. <laughs>